assume that an IQ test is designed such that the mean um, IQ score for the whole population will be 100. So what we're going to look at is does practicing for a week before an IQ test improve your score? So we're going to take a sample from the population who will then practice a week in advance of the IQ test, such like questions to see whether their mean score will be greater than 100. To do this, we can use a one sample t-test. There are some assumptions which need to be met for a one sample t-test, and these are that the sample was collected independently and the sample, the people within the sample are randomly selected and that the population um, is normally distributed. So for a one sample t-test, we're going to state that our null hypothesis is such that H0, denoting our null hypothesis, is that the mean is equal to 100, which is what we would expect. Our alternative hypothesis then is as we are looking to see whether I'm practicing for a week improves your score, is that the mean is greater than 100. So the other thing is that the test statistics we're going to use to calculate the one sample t-test is that t is equal to x bar minus mu all over x divided by root n. So we need to be able to know the values within this test statistic. So we actually perform this test of a sample of size 25 which is randomly selected, and all of the people in the sample are independent. Then, after um, practicing for a week, these, this sample then takes the IQ test, and their mean score, so the mean of the sample, which we denote X bar, is equal to 130. The standard deviations of the scores in this sample, which we denote S, is equal to 15. Um, one other thing we need to know, when doing a t-test, we need to calculate the degrees of freedom for the test, and also alpha, the significance level. So the degrees of freedom for a t-test, just to note, d of f, are equal to n minus 1, so in our case are equal to 24, and we, we will be testing this at the 5% significance level. So our alpha is equal to 0.05. Now, hopefully, we have all the information we need to calculate our test statistic, which will then be equal to x bar, which is 130, the mean of the sample that we have taken, the mean scores that they've achieved, minus mu, which is 100, which is the population mean, all over the standard deviation of the sample, which is 15, divided by the square root of the sample size, which was 25. So if we just work that out, we've got 20 on top, and we divide that by 15 divided by 5 which is just 3 which gives us 10. To then calculate our cutoff region from our t-distribution for our significance level 5 we need to look up in our statistical table t of 0 0.95 because this is a one tail task because we're just looking if our mean is greater than 100 so we're only looking at the upper tail and the degrees of freedom is 24. So T of 0.95, if we just get our statistical tables and we look at our students' T distribution and we look at an, um, a probability of 95%, 1 minus alpha, and we go down to 24, we find the value is 1.711. follows a curve like that, we are looking at the upper tail where our probability of acceptance, um, our probability of rejections alpha here is 0 0.05. So our probability of being in here is 95%. And we've just found that the cutoff for our test with degrees of freedom 24 is 1.711. So if we lie above 1.711, 
we fall in our um, rejection region. So therefore, if our test statistic is greater than t of 1 minus alpha degrees of freedom, we say that we reject the null hypothesis. So we are rejecting H0 because 10 is greater than 1.711. So we lie in this region here, therefore we reject our null hypothesis. So we have proved that from this sample, practicing for a week beforehand does in fact improve the IQ score.